G Television Center at Red 13 Studio. Welcome to Scorch's PFG TV. I am Lord Dugman W. Godspeed. Tonight, on another amazing episode, comedian Jimmy Dunn promoting his new book, Boat Hack. We also have an exclusive interview and performance with Bam Margera. We talk beer with the two beer guys and Scorch his co-host, legendary rock and roll drummer extraordinaire, Sib Hashin. And sitting in for Grassroots, the Gil Korea Band. So let's give it up and make some noise for your host for the most, Scorch. Yeah. Scorch. Oh, you know, Simi, you have a seat for a second because I got a couple of gifts here. <sighs> uh, thank you all very much. What a great audience. Give it up for yourselves. Oh, yeah, give yourself a hand. Holy smokes. So we had our Christmas show last week. I guess this would be our New Year's show because the next time we air will be 2013. You are correct, sir. Which is the year, just so you know, 2013 is the year Scorch's PFG TV is going to go national. You watch this. I'll get big it. time. We're going big time. I'm bringing everybody with us. All of y'all. And I ask you, how can you not go national when you bring the co-host like Sibby Hashin a roll of paper towels because of the guest last week? Uh, you've, you've called me every what night this week. What a show last week. Every, not all. Every night this week. You're like, hey, is, is Lacey Rain coming back? So... Uh, I know you have thoughts about her. She's not here this week, but here for when you go oh, home. Oh, I appreciate that. Okay. And that. Yeah, I doubt that's what you're going to do with it, Sibby. Uh, that right there is the. It's a quicker picker upper. So since you're the quicker releaser, you know what I mean. I'll pick it up. What, are you talking to my wife? What? <laughs> hey, let me ask you this. Uh, don't Sibby, try it. Don't way, try it. For those that don't understand, Sibby, uh, what was that band that you used to play in way back when? Just another band out of Boston. <laughs> On the road, trying to make ends meet. Playing in the cars, you sleeping in the for, bars. You played with Robin Lane and the Chartbusters? Did you know Robin? I know Robin Lane very well. Uh, Sibby from Boston, tell us about the thing you did recently at the Boston, uh, you did a, uh, like a Boston montage. It was a, it was a special showing for uh, WBCN. God bless WBCN! Rest in peace, WBCN! Right. Oh, they man. got cooking back in the late 60s, and they had a, a special uh, party, and they had a filming for a documentary, and it started from all the early DJs right up to 1980. And they didn't go really past 1980, but it was a lot of fun. Billy the Spaceman was there, and uh, when we got through playing our little medley, he came on and he said, you know what? He said, me and Dennis Eckersley used to go on the rampway between, before the games <laughs> and smoke pot with these guys. Yeah! And Sibby's, Sibby's like, dude, I never smoked pot with you in my life. Sibby, same thing with last episode, uh, which you can find on ScorchesPFGTV.com. Sibby uh, uh, doesn't uh, doesn't really burn. Uh, you know that was that, you know. So well, was, wait a minute. Let's well, not go that far. Only when you're in the sun. You I know? don't burn my trash. <laughs> you know. And I put it out on the uh, side. <laughs> but I gotta tell you something. I've never said this before. Oh my God. Here we go. No, no. But it is an honor to have you as part of this TV show. No, no, no. Yeah. You know what I mean? Think about that. Thank you, thank you. When I used to hang out in Jack Walsh's driveway in Hull, Massachusetts, listen to this little portable cassette player, listening to Boston. It was me. Who would have thought then that like you'd be going, you'd, you'd be sinking down so low. Yeah. You'd be, you'd be in a rock and roll Hall of Fame band and now you're doing this show, you well, know what I mean? Well, wait a minute, you said the check's in the mail, right? Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, you know. Uh, once again, I celebrated Hanukkah. You know where my check's oh, going. God bless. Uh, anyway, uh, Shelby, hope everything's all well. We'll see you again in a couple of weeks. R Grassroot, hope you guys are doing well on your tour. All right. Uh, Jimmy Dunn coming up in a little yeah, bit. Yeah, Jimmy. Talking about both yeah. Also, the funny thing is, I love the Red 13 media people. I, I'm the type of guy that needs like a babysitter. And the two beer guys are here. And it's oh. nice because they've come up to me quite a few times. They said, look, we know you. Don't get too drunk. <laughs> so the two beer guys are here. We're going to talk to them yeah. as well. And, 
extra special guest today on the program, the last show of the year. How about ending the show, ending the year, with Bam Margera going to be on the show? Oh, man. So, yeah. let's start off with our segment that we call Weird News. And I, I, once again, I got to do this every show. Let's start off. <laughs> once again, let's start off with our segment that we call Weird News. Whoa. The weirder the better. Eric Smith of Houston, Texas survived getting a drill bit through his head. And I saw this thing. I actually posted it on my radio station website at rock101fm.com. What time are you on? Uh, two to seven in the afternoon. Glad you told me. Although... The way the radio business is, by the time this thing airs, this could be my only show. <laughs> uh, but he had a drill bit going right through his head. And he said he didn't realize that it happened. He was trying to do something. He was trying to cushion it. And he didn't realize that it had happened. Uh, and he said he will never have that kind of pain again after he got his arm cut off by a wind turbine. <laughs> what a how the hell does What's this guy up to? <laughs> you know what I mean? Obviously not that much, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, he was using his head for pressure on the drill bit, well, right? that's it, yes. So, uh, I'm going to do, uh, th do three stories this time, because this is another good one. Gail Williams of Detroit, Michigan. Uh, you travel. Sure. Detroit's still in Michigan, right? You know what? Can I say one little cute little fact uh -oh. about Detroit? Oh, for crying out loud. I could have mentioned Muskegee, only, and we wouldn't have this story. Only place... Topless shoe shine. Oh yeah? yeah. Come on. All right. Next week I'll take a bus. All the guys get on. We're all going out. Yeah. There. Yeah. I'll bring two pair. <laughs> Lacey ain't gonna be there. She's gonna be here. She'll be here. You Cancel might... the bus, guys. There you go. Uh, Gail Williams of Detroit took the law into her own hands recently. Literally. She stole a running police car <laughs> as the police cars are to stop. So she took a joyride. Here's, here's karma being a bitch. She took a joyride in which the car smashed into the local police station. There you go. Huh? Talk about that, huh? Yeah. Yep, the police station also housed the jail, which is where she is now being housed. She didn't have far to walk, career. right? And finally, Alan Johnson of Kentucky said he was innocent of drinking and driving when police pulled him over for driving erratically. Uh, they eventually, I guess he passed all the tests. They Was it the gerbil? They decided to... <laughs> you ruined every... Sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> they decided to let him go. I guess he must have passed the test, you know what I mean? As they let him go, he pulled out an open bottle of Jack Daniels, and he toasted the cops, and the cops brought him to jail. Perfect. Always do that. And there you go, friends. Yeah. That's our secretary of real news. Yeah. Tell you what. Coming back, we're going to tell you how you can get on the show, and... We're going to talk to Jimmy Dunn about his brand new book, Boat Hack. Yeah, Jimmy. It's all coming up on Scorch's BFG TV. We're coming right back. Jill Curry, man. Celestial effects, pro quality guitar effects, Virgo, rock overdrive, Capricorn, rock distortion, Aquarius, fuzz, Scorpio, super boost, Taurus, blues overdrive, Cancer, wad the fuzz. Made in the USA and always in stock with a 30 day money back guarantee. 15% off with coupon code SCORCH. Celestial effects. Pro quality guitar effects only at CelestialEffects.com. I couldn't believe the guy agreed to come on the show today. I thought, I thought he was going to say, you out of your mind? I'm part of that crap. Uh, he's been, no, he's a, this guy has been around. He's a local guy, done really well. Uh, you might know him as a cab driver and a lot of the commercials you see on like the Red the Nesson area, whatnot, which, by the way, I'll get into that later. Uh, give it up for Jimmy Dunn. Yeah. Thank you very much. Put the red cup. Hell yeah. What's up, Scorch? Hey, Jimmy. Jimmy. 
pleasure, man. A pleasure. How are you? Come on, sit down. Get comfy. Hi, Scorch. Hey, Jimmy Dunn. I like a show where you bring your own red cup. You know, anytime we have a red cup, how do you not yeah, like a show with a red cup? Yeah, not good. Do you know, I mean, maybe I'm slow. It's funny how he's sitting a lot farther away from you hey, than, don't make than me last week. Up to right. him, yeah. Yeah. Come on. Oh, that was very good. You remember it was last <laughs> oh, yeah, week? Yeah, yeah. I watch ah. every week, man. Uh, oh, that was good too, Jimmy. Good for you. I never knew till like a month ago the red cups are, are lined inside so you know exactly how much liquor you're supposed to put in for certain drinks. Did you know that? Yeah, because I know a lot of people when they have their red cups are thinking about measurements. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's yeah. what it is, you know. <laughs> hey, Jimmy. Uh, before we get into the book, tell us yes. about everything, man. You've, you've had a, a very storied career. How, how'd you end up as the cab driver on those, uh, those TV commercial things? <laughs> I built the cab. That's the short story. <laughs> I, uh, thank you. Yeah, I got to... <laughs> I, got, I, I was doing a show for Olympia Sports. I do a lot of uh, corporate events, and I was entertaining the folks that work for Olympia, and I uh, met the owner, and we started talking about commercials, and... Next thing you know, I'm pitching them an idea, and the next thing you know, I'm, I'm literally spray painting a car yellow and building our own cab. Good for you, yeah, man. Yeah, thanks, man. Thank you. See, yeah. That goes to show you, with a little bit of initiative, yeah. right. it can really help you. You've well, got to kind of take it upon yourself sometimes. Yeah, you know? we were calling around trying to get a, somebody to rent us a cab, and they were like, we're not going to rent you a cab. There's no <laughs> way. Right? Nobody would give me a cab. And I go, well, give me a thousand bucks, I can build one. They wouldn't even come out if you want to hire a cab. They're afraid of you. They're right. Like, you know. Oh, yeah. So we went on eBay and bought some parts, and we built a little fake cab. It's all Good TV. You, TV's you know? all fake. You know yeah. that. Right. I, you know, we're trying to convince the studio audience. There's 15,000 people today. <laughs> 15,000 of you in the studio audience. Yeah. Good people, so. so uh, I'm trying to convince all 15,000 that it's not fake. Right. And here you are, a real guy. Talking to a fake TV it's all guy fake. <laughs> that it's, it's fake, all fake, you know what I mean? It's all fake, man. But you love what you do, huh? You can tell I you do love, love what, what do. I do. I, I, I get to travel around the world and tell jokes and people pay me. How can you not love that? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> right? Yeah. Tell us about, uh, tell us about, and I know you have a book out. We're going to yeah. get to the book in a little bit. All right. I, I definitely want to talk about it. Because I know this, uh, lit uh, this is a big... Oh, literary show. Yeah, we have a lot of... Yeah, yeah. I know. That yeah, oh, yeah. This has done uh, big, College. big numbers for people that read books. And, and the, Endicott College uh, actually has a library named after us. Yes, yeah, so there you go. Right. The uh, PFG uh, Library. The PFG Library, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I, I am honored to have my book in the PFG <laughs> Library, my friend. Yeah. You know, on a side note, I do have a cat house named after me. Uh, for my applause for the cause, just so you know. Uh, what was it like... Let's go back many, many, many years. Okay? All right. What was it like the first time you got that call that says, I mean, above and beyond the smaller things you did? Your rent's the, overdue. What was the first? <laughs> what was the first? That was, uh, what day is today? Yeah. What was the first big gig you had? And what was it like? Re relive that first call. The, well, the first real uh, comedy gig. Yeah. I was uh, pounding around doing open mic nights and grinding it out and trying to learn how to do it. And there's a comic in Boston named Kevin Flynn, who's now yep. in New York City. Great, yeah, yep, great yep, guy. Yep, yep. And he called me once and he said, uh, he said, look, I saw you do the thing at the open mic. Can you do 15 minutes? And I went, yeah, sure. And he said, I got a gig up in Maine. And uh, you come open up for me. And I went, yeah, I got a real gig, you know? <laughs> yeah. And we went uh, through all of Maine, right to the, <laughs> to the end of Maine. And some little hellhole, and I did 15 minutes in front of him, and he gave me 75 bucks after the show, wow. and I thought, I am a it. professional <laughs> there you stand up. Go. And, he was, yeah. and he was hooked. He was hooked yeah. in a sense. And now, he called me last week, and we're doing the gig again next week. So. <laughs> it was more than 75 bucks, though. You, no, imagine. it's still 75. I'm oh, still well, good for you, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But Maine has, Maine has shrunk, so that's you don't right. have to worry about it so much. <laughs> now, that's interesting. So. You and you said something. Does it bother you? Because it truly and and I've called people out on it. When people say, "Oh, I can do that," it's nothing. Oh yeah. Doesn't that? You, you, don't you want to just call them out every single time and say, "Come on up, try it." Because oh, you yeah. know what? It's when you can make Uncle Louie laugh because he's s faced at the bar mitzvah. Right. It doesn't mean you can make. You know what I mean? No, it doesn't mean right. you can make oh, no. a room full of people laugh. And you got to be able to also, if they don't laugh, you got to be able to not let it get to you. you know? Right. It's, yeah. Well, you got you got to be thick skinned, and you you know you forget about the bad gigs as soon as you walk out the door. You know, and then you remember the good ones as long as you can. And uh, it, if everyone could do it, they would. You know, there's a reason. 
fucked up. Right? No, no, there's no doubt. Yeah. You know? can, can I ask some questions? My own, yeah. Yes. Who, who, who would you think out of all the great comedians, you know, in the last, not that far, but maybe 30, 40 years, yeah. who do you think has been the most influential on you? Oh, for me, there's yeah. no question in my mind, it's Lenny Clark and Don Gavin. Awesome. Good for you. Good, good friends. Uh, yeah. Good for you. Awesome. Yeah, and awesome. The, those guys are my absolute comedy heroes and, and, and good friends now, too. But I used to, you know, when, when comedy started in Boston, it was down in the basements and it yeah, was really yeah, dirty yeah, and dangerous. Yeah, yeah. And you didn't know what Lenny Clark was going to do. And people would go <laughs> see Lenny and go, oh, my God. I mean, he was a god in this town. Yeah, and yeah. I was one of the guys that that's one of the reasons I got into stand up comedy I used to watch those guys and go. You know, you know, they were I rock stars yeah. back oh, then, yeah. right? They were I mean, they were as big. And they were doing the drugs too, yeah. like oh, the rock stars. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I heard. So I heard. Allegedly. Right. Allegedly. Allegedly, they were being paid in bags. The funny Allegedly. Thing, a while back, last show I think it was, you mentioned the WBCN thing. My influence in Boston, you'd understand this too, is Mark Parento. Sure. Yeah, yeah he was a huge supporter. Of Mark Parento was, without a doubt, next to me, the best afternoon guy ever in the history of radio. Did you know I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, by and, the way, and a big and a big comedy supporter. He no, would. Yeah, big. That was a that yeah. another. You talk about big moments. Yeah. When you're one of the coolest moments when you're driving down the road and you hear your comedy CD being played on the uh, on the BCN, uh, on, the, yeah. on BCN. Five minutes. Oh five my minutes. god. Five that's, minutes past big hour. Five yeah, hour. that's it. Well, Moron, yeah. psychopaths, yeah. and mental defectors. Yeah, no doubt, man. <laughs> and by the way, the third best afternoon talent, just so you know, is Jr. at WHEB, my sister station. Uh, just so you know. See, I know how to stroke the man. Yeah, I know, I know what you're I know, doing, I know man. What I'm doing there, you know. I know it's right down here on the bottom. I They're see. Very I good. Bugged. Hey, see, wow, Jimmy Dunn. Even though TV is fake, Jimmy's obviously dealt That's with it right. before because he knows how it goes. I'm, I'm, I watch. What do you do now? Like, uh, what do you do on your off time? On my off or time. Or do you have well, off time? Yeah, I have. Off, do I have off time? I work a half hour a night. <laughs> 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 you're the best gig in the world. Yeah. I, uh, let's see, I, I eat a lot, I, <laughs> I play video games, I like to surf, I'm a big yeah, surfer, yeah. and I live, uh, I live up near the beach, and yep. I do a lot of surfing up there, and, and I get to surf a lot when I travel too, so um, I, I like to enjoy the other 23 and a half hours, man. That's Tell you yeah. what, we're going to come back, we're going to talk to Jimmy about his book, Boat Hack, in just a couple of seconds. He's now an author! Yeah! Right. Top of everything else! Uh, and we have the two beer guys coming up. And Ben Marchera. And you'll know your sports in the FCC. I also want to thank modernconcepts.org. You know what, Matt, at modernconcepts.org was the one that very generously put together ScorchesPFGTV.com. So you know what, if you need website design, shopping carts, e-commerce, uh, design and hosting services, uh, search engine submissions, they can do it all. Check out modernconcepts.org. And once again, make sure you let them know that Scorchy sent you. GTV. We call this show Letterman without the overhead. <laughs> That's what I like to consider this show. We're like Letterman without the overhead, you know what I mean? Uh, it's uh, comedian Jimmy Dunn with us, by the way. Yeah, Jimmy. Jimmy Dunn. Now, I love it. The book is called Boat Hack. Uh, you know, a stand-up comic's farewell to the cruise industry. And uh, you can clap for that, you know. That's a good thing. He's an author now. So the interesting thing is, I know one of the pages you write that being a comedian on a cruise ship is like being a prisoner. <laughs> you know what I mean? Tell us about that, because you got some great stories about the cruise ship industry, you know? It's, um, I did it for 10 years, and I would go out uh, for a week at a time, maybe once a month, and uh, people save their whole lives to go on cruises, and I get that. And they go out, and they have a completely different experience than we have. And we go out there for a week at a time, and as soon as we get on, we're counting the days until we get off. <laughs> it's, it's, it's something about the comics mentality, and it's just you know people people telling you what to do, what you can do, what you can't do, and it yeah, just it yeah. just didn't fit my lifestyle. So 
Um, it was a really fun job for a while. I traveled all over the world. I saw it. I was I went everywhere on cruise ships. I would imagine, huh? And it, it was you know it's a great gig. But then at midnight, when everyone is as shattered as they possibly can be, <laughs> they go, "Go ahead, go entertain those drunks." Oh, thanks. This all will right. be fun. And then, yeah. and, and then you got to spend the whole week on the ship with the same people, going, "Oh, please don't recognize me. Please don't." Recognize me. <laughs> You're the comedian. I got a joke for you. Oh, oh that would be oh. a treat. <laughs> that would be, that would be great. Because I don't have sweetheart. enough of my own good ones. I'd love to hear yours, you know. Uh, so now the first cruise ship, because I would imagine, like you said, at first, yeah. especially as a younger guy, you're like cruise ship. Uh, you think love boat. You yeah. think you know. Although yeah, but you do. You think that that was that that Asian guy they, they, that used to do the commercial for the uh, for the money, the wealth guy. You know what I mean? They, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah, say, yeah. oh, I, I got boat full of women. Yeah, you know. But it's not right. like that. You know what I mean? It, well, the, the first one I did was Fifty Days in Tahiti, and that was oh, pretty nice. amazing. Yeah. yeah, and you know, around here in the winter, and someone says, "You want to go to Tahiti for fifty days, and we'll pay you." Yes. I would imagine. Wow. Yeah. No doubt, huh? So I brought my surfboard on that trip, and that was a good one, man. That was uh, you fun. still have pictures of yourself wearing a grass skirt and caught like commando, right? <laughs> uh, on the website, is that right? Those are on the internet, oh, yeah. Those allegedly. <laughs> JimmyDunnXX.com. That's all other issue. <laughs> what was that like, though? So that must have been. Now, Tahiti, today, and I'm, I'm going to sound really ignorant right now. They speak yeah, English? They do speak English, okay, yes. And so French. English okay. and French, which I know a little bit of French from high school. I um, I learned that I can fake French yeah. because women like the language. A so bon pan right. does not, does not Well, no, no. What French. I do is I string together wine, cheese, and a hockey player. Oh, good for you, right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so I'll go, I'll go up to a woman and go, "Bujale <laughs> et fromage Guy la fleur." Hell yeah! Oh, dude. That's French right there. I'm ready to unzip you right now, Jimmy Dunn. No, no, man. Good for you. That's scary. <laughs> yeah, that is. You know what? The, the fact I thought about it seems scarier. You know, but it's, it's the French mentality. I think that's what did it, you know? I went to France on a ship. Yeah? I was 40 feet from the Eiffel Tower, and I oh. get this French waiter giving me a hard time because I'm an American. And he goes, yeah, you get back to America. You tell your president, blah, 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 blah. And I went, buddy, let me stop you right there. <laughs> We don't hang out, me and the president. <laughs> you know? and he, but he's like, he just insists and he wants my, yeah, you the American, blah, 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 and he starts giving me a hard time. And he goes, how come after the bombing and you wouldn't let us help rebuild something or other? And I went, finally I snapped, I go, because you haven't finished building France yet, right? I'm, I'm, I'm sitting 40 feet from the Eiffel Tower and I'm going, you haven't even put any sheetrock on that thing yet. <laughs> like, you know, the framing work is nice, but you got to finish the job. <laughs> How long did it take you to come up with this book? And uh, be honest, this isn't one of those books you can do yourself. That's a real internet, book. Right? Yeah, this no, is a real that's one. a real yeah. book with a publisher, the whole deal, man. Yeah, yeah thank you. Uh, you can pick it up at jimmydunnpublishing.com. jimmydunn.com, you can get that book. Uh, but it took me... Um, honestly, how long did it take you? Took, a while. I, what happened was every night after the shows... Yeah, you get you get jacked up from the energy. Yeah, and yeah. so at midnight, I'd go sit up on the top deck of the ship, and I'd just write little stories and little things that I saw during the day. And you know, comedians are always writing. We're always trying to put, you know. So I had a stack of notebooks when I finally uh, quit or got fired, depending on who you ask. <laughs> I know we got to talk about that soon. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, I had this stack of notebooks, and I, I always had in my head that when I walked away. I was going to write sort of a tell-all thing because uh, Anthony Bourdain's book, Kitchen yeah, Confidential, yeah, is one, yeah, one of my favorite books yeah, of all time. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, a, yeah, I'm a huge fan now, of that. If you go so I your, wanted to do something like that. If you go to your Facebook page, I notice you have Anthony Bourdain's book right on top of right, yours. Right on top yeah, of mine. Nice, huh? right, and, and Fear and Loathing on top of that, my three favorite books. Yep. <laughs> I actually have and pictures. I'm not in that class at all, but it just felt cool. I actually have pictures cool. of Anthony Bourdain on top of you on that cruise ship in Tahiti. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Those now, are also on the internet. Also on the internet. Now, let me ask you this, and I'm going to mm. give Greg in a morning buzz a little plug because when yeah. we're at Lend a Helping Can, yep. Greg in the morning buzz are on like a million stations in New England, uh, rock101fm.com and other places. You know what I mean? Big supporters. Big supporters. Um, you mentioned the story about how you ended your last, uh, your last <laughs> comedy night on yeah. a cruise ship. Tell us about that. All right. Well, I won't get into the details of why I was done, but a decision was made in my head that this is it. <laughs> I'm done. And there was some talk with some management, and everybody basically came down and said, do this last show tonight, and then you can go, and we'll leave as whatever, but we'll leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So I thought I was going to take the high road, and <laughs> it was a formal night, and everyone's all dressed up, and I'm doing the midnight show in my tuxedo, and the cruise director, who I had a battle with, is standing in the corner giving me the stink eye. <laughs> and I got, I got five minutes left in my cruise ship career. <laughs> go, well, I could just finish this out with some nice clean jokes, and leave. these people had nothing to do with this. Nah. <laughs> so <laughs> there's an old really dirty joke called the aristocrats that comedians do when they don't like the audience. And it basically it starts off with a guy walking into an entertainment agency and he says, I have the greatest act of all time. And then you go on to describe <laughs> the act and you describe the most filthy vulgar act you could come up with. And the punchline is, what do you call such a horrible act? The aristocrats. And it's, it's, <laughs> it's not a real funny joke, but the, the brilliance in it is how filthy you can get. Yeah. And other you pe know. people make it dirtier than other people. Dirty things. and dirtier and dirtier. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. anyway, I get into it. And I get <laughs> donkeys and midgets and just, <laughs> just everything that's wrong. And what do you call such an act? The aristocrats. Good night. And the people were just like, horrified. <laughs> <laughs> 8 a.m. the next morning, we're still an hour from land. Security banging on my door. Mr. Dunn, pack your bags and come with us. They threw me off in Mexico. Like I can't get home from Mexico. <laughs> and that was it. He just said it a while ago. Jimmy jumped on a surfboard and surfed from Mexico above the Pacific Ocean to the Pacific Northwest, all the way through Canada, back to New England. The El Nino effect, yeah. Back to Scorch's right PMTV. Back here, man. Hey, uh, <laughs> now, how do people get a hold of your book, for real? JimmyDunn.com, there's a link on it. You can buy it on the, the Kindles and the Nooks, and you can buy it online as a book. And... JimmyDunn.com, you can get it. I love it. Jimmy, thank, thank you, you so much. Hey, Good listen, to see you. Would you come back on? I would love to. Okay, we're gonna I have, love this. We're this gonna is have beautiful, you back man. on soon, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Uh, it's Jimmy Dunn, ladies and gentlemen. Thank Buy you very the much. Book. Buy the book. Buy the book. Hey, listen, uh, and trust us, we don't usually do anything by the book. Right. So, you know what I mean? Uh, all the way, we're gonna talk to the two beer guys and Bam Margera as we continue the final show of 2012. On scores is BFT TV. We're coming right back. Road gripping, symmetrical, all wheel drive, standard. And with 36 miles per gallon, the Impreza is the most fuel efficient all wheel drive car in America. Drive home a brand new Subaru Impreza, well equipped at $17,895. It worked, okay. I invited the two beer guys to come in. I said, bring us some samples. They did what I expected them to do. They gave us the samples. Now we don't even need to talk to them. <laughs> let's, let's drink. Do you know what I mean? Let's, <laughs> let's drink to them. To the two beer guys, God bless you. Uh, you know what? They have a blog and they're online, twobeerguys.com. Uh, and they really have a lot of good things to say. Today we're going to be talking about winter beers. Uh, give it up for Sean and yeah. Ryan. It's the two beer guys. It's going to be MGTV. See, I would, uh, I would stand up and, and, and welcome you as well, but I've been drinking with you guys since 10 this morning, and, and it's now about 11.30 at night, so uh, I, I don't think I can stand, you know what I mean? Tell us about the twobeerguys.com and what made you, other than the fact you like to drink and you want to talk about it, made you come up with the website? Well, um, in about 2005, um, my friend Ian and I, we were uh, drinking a lot of beer and we, were, we, became, <laughs> we, we, we became really good at buying beer um, and we realized, <laughs> we realized that we, we would make these walls of beer and we'd find uh, 12 packs and cases. We had 12 packs for like $6.99. Um, and we realized that we had this whole big wall of beer and all the beer was about the same style. Uh, we saw these other beers on the shelf that we just ignored every single time because they cost the same. Um, and we realized that if we were going to try those, we wanted to start writing them down. 
Um, so our original concept was that we started writing down the beers that we were having, and we came up with a process to uh, basically score beer, and we sort of morphed it off of some other groups that were out there and uh, came up with this way. And uh, since then, um, we've been uh, teaching about beer, uh, expanding people's uh, minds, and um, hosting a lot of different beer events in the, uh, in the region. You know, and, and this is the truth. Back, uh, back in the day, back when I was 12 and I started drinking, um, we used to, no, no, in the day we used to go to this empty garage at the summer house, because I lived on the beach and there was an empty summer house in the winter time, it was empty. And we'd go to the downstairs, underneath the, uh, the basement of this house, and we would drink our Miller, our Miller beer, and that was always, that was our first beer. Then we went to, uh, from Miller we went to Michelob, uh, then we ended up getting Schlitz, because we, we, we used to turn the Schlitz 12 caps into Schlitz hats. <laughs> and we used to, when I got arrested for a teacher harassment, uh, I was wearing my Schlitz cap at the time. <laughs> That's another story for another show, folks. I don't condone it, so don't, you know. Uh, but what I was going to ask you is, have your beer tastes changed from, you know, the regular, the, the beers you hear about every day? To, you, you like these newer fangled beers at this point more than the uh, original ones, yeah? It, it did. Um... I can uh, attest to the fact that Sean's taste changed. Um, four I don't years. know if I want to hear about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait a second, man. I don't know. Okay, I send you guys, before every show, I send you things you can and can't talk about. I say, you can get sexual, but you really can't get graphic. And there you are bringing that up first. That's really nice. Well, I'm four years younger than Sean, so when we... Oh, that's even worse. <laughs> I would have never guessed that. You're not helping I would have said at least five years Have younger. another drink and let us talk to Sean. No. <laughs> So, no, go ahead. Tell us your story. <laughs> so, when I was a freshman in college, he, uh, my first weekend in school, he brought me a 12-pack and said, Mom and Dad told me to keep an eye on you. So, here's some beer. <laughs> it was Coors Light. I took a sip and handed it back to him and asked him for something with some flavor. But he was, that's what he was drinking at that point. So, I was stuck drinking that until I could afford to buy my own. Sean! I've known Sean now for about 10 years. Sean does that to a lot of kids. He goes to various schools all over the area and says, hey, mom and dad told me to give you this course light. Just keep it quiet. Uh, yeah, and I, you know what? Honest to God, and Coors Light, like you said, it's almost flavorless, but, and this is a good thing for Coors Light, especially in the summertime, if you want to sponsor the show. Uh, Coors Light, it's in a cooler underneath ice all day long, and you drink a Coors Light, it actually is a very refreshing beer, you know what I mean? No, it is, you know? I'll tell you what I like now. Do you know what I like now? I really like Guinness Black. Okay, the Guinness Black, it doesn't taste like the Guinness, and I love Guinness too. Guinness Black doesn't taste like Guinness. It's almost like a Yingling, which I, you know, God bless Yingling, you know. Uh, but now, so let me ask you guys this. You know about beer. Guinness originally, the real Guinness, if you still get it from overseas, it has beef bones and beef and meat marrow in it. Did you know that? I did not know that. Oh, you didn't know, I didn't that. know that as well. Yeah, look it up. Honest to God, I'm not giving you crap. Guinness, real Guinness beer is made with beef marrow as, as part of the beer. That's interesting. What's the strangest ingredient you've seen pop up in beer uh, in your travels? As the two beer guys.com, by the way. Uh, there's a lot of beers that are uh, coming out right now with uh, the people are experience, experimenting with bacon. Bacon beer, yeah. Yeah, bacon. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's all sorts of. Uh, well, there's also if you I mean if you can grow it, they're trying to put it in it, and so that yeah. there are all sorts Hell of yeah. uh, uh, different things out there. Uh, we we brought your local brew, so this is actually made here in town on the ends. Uh, on the ends is uh, Jack's Abbey. It started in January 2011. Yeah. Now it's made in town. Is it made here? I don't think it's made in this studio, but oh, it is made here. in town. Really? Uh, and we brought two beers. We brought a session lager and a IPL. Um, and IPL might confuse you uh, because it stands for India Pale Lager rather than India Pale Ale. I'll tell you what, Session Lager, uh, uh, that confused me a little bit more than IPL, just so you know. <laughs> well, th right now there's a, there's a sort of uh, a movement of a group of people where that they want high quality, high flavorful beer, but lower in alcohol. And the idea of it... What the hell is wrong with America? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Oh, the, the idea behind sessions is that you can sit down and have a bunch of them in a session and you still can function afterwards. Ah, okay, I'll get that, yeah. So you want something that's flavorful and something tasty. Have and you not seen this show? We don't like to function afterwards. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know. right. 
talking to the wrong guys. I'm like, function ever. We don't like to function even before it. What the hell? We don't. Uh, and, and now, let me ask you this. Where in Framingham is, where's the brewery in Framingham? I've never, well, are you going to give me the address for Christ? <laughs> I, I could have done that. I don't have a beer blog, and I could have done that. Well, the, the map is right there. If you, could, if you could pull it up, it's right off of... Um, the Morton Street. Well, they should be advertising on the show. What else do you have with you? So we also brought um, Winterhook from Red Hook. Um, Red Hook started in uh, Seattle, Washington in 1981. They opened up a brewery, um, Red Hook, in Portsmouth, New Hampshire in uh, 1996, and we brought their Winterhook. That <laughs> they've, Red Hook's been making this beer for 28 years, and each year the recipe is a little bit different. Um, and we brought this here because uh, in the end of February and the beginning of March, we'll be celebrating Portsmouth Beer Week. Wow, no doubt. Wow. 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 Hope we're invited to that one. Oh, you're definitely invited to Portsmouth Great. Beer Week. Hey, what is this? Help me, help me. <laughs> That's Sean's liver. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was the fly. Your liver right now is like just curdling up. Saying, Tell him about more beer. Come on, man. What the hell? Uh, now, before, before Sean opened up TwoBeerGuys.com, Sean was 112 pounds. Uh, just so you know. Uh, well, you know, so. You know what they say about a skinny beer guy, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> don't trust him. Well, either that or they're, you know, they do the Karen Carpenter thing, which I don't mean to offend anybody. Oh, Lord God. I don't, I, I don't want any Send your cards to the sports. Yeah, I know, right? Exactly. Uh, and what else do you have? Finally, what else do you have for the, for the last beer? No, nope, so there's, there's two beers okay. from the same brewery. And now tell us about the twobeerguys.com. Tell us about your site. So if you visit our site, we actually have uh, two different uh, personas. Uh, the main site is about beer education, uh, where you can learn about different styles of beer and different beers that we've had. And then we have our blog site, where we do collaborations with other, um, other breweries or other, other bloggers across the United States. Right now, we're featuring um, 31 beers of December. Um, and that is kind of like a beer advent calendar. And we've gone out to our friends, and we have uh, 31 different bloggers blogging every day about their beer from their, the region that they live in that's the, their favorite beer. Do you guys, do you guys like talk dirty beer to each other? You gotta say, so how are your hops looking, man? Oh, I saw the, the most beautiful set of barley the other day. That was, yeah, do you guys do like dirty beer talk? No? We haven't, but does that nothing stop That might be a good genre us. to start, dirty beer talk. We'll have it at scorchespfgtv.com. Hey, listen, guys, here's what I want to do. Okay, this is your first time on the show. Okay, it's the end of the year, 2013. I would love to have you on the show more regular as the Scorch's PFG TV beer guys. Yeah. You got it? We, we would like to be here with you. Okay, there you go. It's two beer guys, twobeerguys.com. And we're just about ready to close things out, but before we do, what a way to do the last segment of the last show of 2012. Uh, this was an honor and a privilege, a privilege rather. See what happened? When you start <laughs> Give him another beer. This is an honor and a privilege. And, and, and I mean that, man. And I mean that, man. And a lot of things are coming out of it, which is a really good thing. I give it up, a very special guest. This is Ben Margera. Live hey, on Ben. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, look at this. I'm here with Bam Margera. It looked like I had a noose coming down. I'm like, what the hell you set me up for, man? I don't want to be part of your little, your little stunts. Uh, what's going on, brother? How's it going, man? Good. Uh, we've been doing this F Face Unstoppable tour um, in New England, and uh, this is our last date. And then we have a, we have a sold-out show in Pittsburgh, actually, on the 17th. And you get to go from Manchester and New Hampshire to Pittsburgh. You, you, you're living the life, man. Well, actually, we have two days off, don't we? Yeah. Right after Pittsburgh, you fly the next morning. Right after Pittsburgh, he flies the next morning right to Flo Jacksonville. I don't believe that's happening. Yeah, North Carolina, I, we can have a fight about it. That's cool with we us. Can have a fight about I it. think that's cool. Hey, what <laughs> the, what made you? Because I'm sure you get asked this all the time, but our listeners and you know, we, they probably haven't seen it. What made you start doing what the hell you do? <laughs> well, basically, I started skateboarding when I was seven, and uh, and there was always a camera around me filming the skate tricks, and I just started doing like goofy things in between like getting in a shopping cart and getting pushed full speed into a bush or something and and uh i made a video called cky and and people who didn't even skate liked it just as much as the skaters so yeah, through yeah, word of mouth yeah. it got a hold of jeff tremaine who uh who asked me to be on a show called jackass eventually yep and, and was did you say to yourself 
look, I've been doing this stupid fish forever, and I'm actually going to be a star from it. You know what I mean? That, so that, that must have been something, huh? It actually happened like a light switch overnight. Like, the very next day, I was like the nobody kid who nobody gave a crap about in high school. And then the next day, like, every girl wanted to talk to me to the point where I was like, this is so... Like it was such bollocks that I just quit the very next day. Yeah, right. <laughs> Tenth grade, I quit. So good for you. <laughs> See, uh, to the uh, National Education Association, we don't <laughs> recommend this for everybody. However, Bam did it and succeeded. I did it, and look where I ended up. You know what I mean? So that's a big difference. Well, the guidance counselor was like. Yeah. He didn't even know if I was any good at skateboarding or anything. He's like, you're quitting school to become a professional <laughs> skateboarder. I'm like, yeah. He's like, huh. and you think that's going to work? I'm like, I know it's going to work. He's like, skateboarding is a fad. It's going to die out in a year, and then you're going to be stranded with nothing. Then I went to California, came back six months later with a red Ferrari, and he directs traffic at the end, so I was going to pull up and just give him the finger, but something came over me, and I never wound up doing it. Uh, you do still have time to do that, though, you know what I mean? You definitely do still have time to give him the finger, I would imagine. He's probably expecting that, but you know what? If you do that now, yeah. you're gonna get, this guy's going to be like, Ben Margera gave me the finger. He's yeah. going to be all, he's going he's gonna to get the women because of that, you well, know what he, I mean? He, he's got to see newspapers around the Philly area knowing what I'm up to. So, uh, that was somebody that was just shooting me with like a, uh, I just got tasered with the, the cops are here tasering me. I don't know what the hell's going on. Hi, everybody out there in camera land. What's going on? Yeah, there you go. Uh, who are you taking pictures for, by the way? It's not for the police, right? <laughs> okay, there you go. I love it. Uh, now, when you saw, so you've done lots of different stunts. Have you, when you, could, I've been in professional wrestling, so I know when something's going to go wrong, you're like, oh, crap, this ain't going to work right. Yeah. Have you been in the middle of a stunt when you say, it starts off great, this is going to be great. Oh, shit, this ain't good. Uh, well, whenever I think that in the beginning before the stunt happens, I go, hey, Novak. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Why don't you get in the shopping cart? Because I don't think, or whatever. But uh, anything that I don't want to do, is something that's out of my control, like falling into a pit of snakes. Yeah. I got sabotaged. Yeah. And I think I'm going to do a, a Rocky on the director, Tremaine, but instead I sneak up and fall into a pit of snakes. If I would have known that that was going to happen, yeah. I would have been on yeah. the first flight home to Philadelphia. Yep. Now, so, because I hear you have a fear of snakes. Is that right? Like a bad fear yeah, of snakes? Yeah, and that's yeah. the worst thing you could ever tell Jack here. It's like, I'll do anything. Just I just don't want to mess around with snakes because yeah. I, I really don't like snakes. All that means is let's get snakes in front of Bam. <laughs> so when something like that happens, you try now you avoid that altogether. You make you check into every stunt you do now, right? As best as you can, but I mean <laughs> you're never safe on the jackass set. Like even if it's like lunchtime and like you know that you're still not safe. Like that's when you go for the macaroni and cheese, and then the macaroni and cheese bomb will blow up in your face or something. Which is so <laughs> cool that you're still true to yourself, which I love. So how have you? How is how have you, for lack of a better term, accepted and lived with going from being what you just said, is dropping out of tenth grade to being a mega star? How is how has Bam Margera like handled that? You you still um, you're still yourself and you still yeah, have fun. I mean, I've, you know? I, well, I've never moved. I, I mean, I I'm in Los Angeles more than I'm home, but I mean, Paramount yeah. buys me a hotel, so there's no need for me to get a place out there. So I've always lived where I came from. And Novak actually was at some diner listening to some frat boy talking about me and he d he didn't know that he's my best friend. So he over here says, <laughs> Man, F that kid bad man. That kid forgot where he came from. And Novak's yeah. just like uh, idiot, he still lives where he came from, so how is he going to not know where he came from if he still lives where he came from? <laughs> you know, I'm going to bring up something, and I don't want it's not a bad thing, I'm going to turn a bad thing into a good thing, okay? The thing you did with the with the poster with the dog, okay? I know you got a lot of yeah. crap for that. Now, I this is a legit fact, I live in a dog's crate for a week every year. To, to raise money for uh, no for no kill animal shelters and you know what as somebody that does things for animals I thought that was hilarious man good for you you know what I mean that didn't offend me and honestly if that didn't offend me those people that got all bitching and moaning about it that yeah. lighten the hell up people and, and you know like what not I mean? to mention I have, I have six kitty cats and a puppy like I'm of obviously course. an animal lover of course and whether the gun was real or fake which it was fake it's you know I'm what I mean? on jackass I like I like all kinds of humor, and I like shock value purposes. The worst <laughs> thing was my timing was so bad with, well, the, with the gunfire yeah. because I don't read the paper and I don't watch the news. So <laughs> apparently two days before that in the Philadelphia area, 
people yeah. were burning dogs in their cages. Oh yeah. So it was really bad timing like on yeah. my part. Your dog yeah. in a cage if I would have known fire. that, I wouldn't have shot See, the photo. You know what? And and not to get back to a happier note, people should watch stuff like Jackass because that's how you, you don't have fun burning animals. You have yeah. fun uh, going off of cliffs and shopping carts saying, yeah. "Hey." Help, you know, so <laughs> hey, it's uh, Bam RJ. Hey, Bam, thank you so much for coming out to Scorch's PFG TV Fest. Yeah. Have a ball out there, and we're gonna take you up on helping us out on the pause for the yeah, cause. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it's a uh, Bam Margera and crew live on the bus uh, on Scorch's PFG TV. And by the way, and he's not even gay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gay if I'm bored or if can be paid out of it. There you go. We are live. It's a uh, Scorch's PFG TV. We'll be coming back live from the PFG TV yeah. Fest. If you have any sense, go buy this book. It's the best autobiography memoir written in the world. It's called Dream Seller. S-E-L-L-E-R. Buy it, boys. We'd like to thank Chris Redkey's American Biomedical Corporation, the world leader in the medical laser service and education industry. They service over 3,500 hospitals, surgery centers, and doctor's offices worldwide. In addition, they also provide engineering support, design services, and consulting services to some of the largest medical laser manufacturers in the country and in the world. Check them out online at AmericanBiomedicalCorp.com. I think we need to play all my friends at that.